I'm Aria Schwartz, along with my co-host, Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the WNBA Insider Show. Each week, we cover different topics important to the W, using X's and O's, along with key stats, we bring honest and critical analysis. Rachel. Can I, can I, just, can I just interrupt you? Yeah. That, that intro song is just like ingrained in my mind. I just, I just wanted to give you an appreciation of the like 1989 kind of arcade um, intro song we have. I, I just like, I, I, I like dance to it every time. I, that was, that's what, that's what I do too. You got to get pumped for the episode. Uh, I do a little, I do a little jig in my seat. I feel like I'd be playing place. like Atari or something. <laughs> or like WNBA jams. Right. If WNBA Jam had a game, that that would definitely would have been the intro. Oh actually. man! If if, it, if that was my other job, that's what I'd be doing right now is creating like because it's such crap crap uh, graphics. So it can't I be that. I just had to say that. I just had to say. That. <laughs> well, um, the big news, as I'm sure everyone knows, unless you're living under a rock, and even then, I'm sure you got some sort of mail about this. Maya Moore has made it official that she's sitting out the 2019 season for personal and religious reasons. Um, all the respect, Rachel, I'll let you talk to that. I have all the respect for her doing that. Uh, talk about it, Rachel. Um, well, I, I think it takes, um, yeah, well, one, I don't think anybody who has been following it was very surprised. Um, I think a, a lot of people anticipated this and in, in some ways probably hoped that this was the case and that it wasn't something like a, you know, a retirement or, you know, something, something different. I think this was kind of in a lot of ways, um, a best case scenario um, for Maya and, and her just taking a year. I think what's interesting is, you know, right after the news came out, it kind of quickly, the narrative switched to, man, you know, we, we got to find a better way for these women to, you know, protect their bodies and, and all that. Well, that that's not necessarily, that's not really what Maya's doing here, you know. Um, and I think it's important to remember that, you know, although that might have something to do with it, uh, we've seen players in the past, you know, step away for a year, even get paid to sit out a season, as we saw with Tarazi. But um, Maya has, you know, her, her faith and, and, and the convictions and the, the things that are, are working in her heart are so powerful and so strong that she feels like she's got to give this some time to really pursue other avenues, um, things that she feels, you know, the Lord is doing in her heart. And so, um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to see, um, you know, what, what comes of this and everything that it has planned for her. But at the same time, you know, this, this doesn't really, well, this is an incredible move for her. It's an, it's incredibly brave. Um, she has a lot of strength and courage to do that because there's going to be a ton of people with their own opinions and to, to truly just step aside and say, you know, th this is, this is what's on my heart. This is what I feel I need to do. This is where I need to spend my time and, and, and get my focus with right now, um, is incredibly, incredibly strong by Maya Moore. So I, I really, um, I respect that greatly, but I think what, what's important is, is to focus that on that. That's what she's doing. Um, it, it's, it's based around those areas as opposed to like a resting issue. Um, and at the same time, this doesn't really address what's going to happen in 2020. Um, and we can get into that here in a minute, but, um, I think, you know, if anything, this kind of puts, you know, a little bit of, a we get a little bit of information. We know not to anticipate her playing this summer, 2019, but it really didn't address any issues in terms of what could potentially be going on behind the scenes. Oh, a hundred percent. And, and I, let's, let's backtrack it a month ago, let's say, or, or a little bit over a month ago, there was a report by a WCCO, uh, news person in Minnesota that basically said, I'm hearing rumors that Maya will not be playing this season. That could mean retirement. That could mean trade demand. That could mean sitting out. <clears throat> now, everybody took that and ran with it to say, oh, there's some beef in the organization. Now, not to say that there isn't beef in the organization. I don't know. But for this to that, and, and, then we hear, you know, a lot of time goes by. We don't really hear anything. Two nights ago, Cheryl Reeve has their season ticket holder event. And she speaks to them and says, basically trashes, from my understanding, from what I've heard, trashed the report, said it was completely false, 
said that the next day it, she will be vindicated in that claim. Now, we're all on Twitter waiting, waiting, waiting. What comes out? Maya publishes on the Players' Tribune a short article explaining that she will be sitting out and explaining her reasons. Power to her. Make your own decision. It's your life, Maya. But I don't know personally if Maya's statement fully went to the extreme that Reeve put out the night before. That's my take. I mean, look, it's 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 apples and oranges. It's, it's picking at little things at this point. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I think it's fair for us to assume that there is more going on behind the scenes, and that's why we're hearing about it today. Like, let's be real. Maya's a very calculated and smart person. Cheryl's a very calculated and smart person. There has to be some thought process behind why they did it when they did it. I, I That's just my opinion. That's oh, not based on anything more yeah, than Yeah, Joe. well, I mean, th- th- there's so much more to this. There are so many more layers um, that we that we may never understand. Um, there could be a plan in place that we may never understand. Uh, but this is, you know, you have to spin this in a different way. This is Maya Moore we're talking about. You know, this is um, arguably some of the, the biggest news we're going to hear about this WNBA season, one of the biggest storylines in terms of her sitting out. So, um, you know, the, the calculation involved in this and how it's spun um, to whatever degree that is, I think, you know, at the end of the day, it really does. I mean, not to sit there and dissect her piece in the Players' Tribune, you know, with a, a magnifying glass. But I agree. I do think it does leave um, the conversation kind of wide open. Um, it didn't really address a lot of those things, and but it didn't need to. Um, so yeah. I think time is going to tell. It's very possible that we see Maya Moore return in 2020 um, with the Minnesota Lynx. I think it's very possible that she never plays for them again. It's very possible that she retires and never plays basketball so you're, again. You're sticking, you're sticking with your hot take? I, I, I am because I, I don't even know if Maya knows at this point. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mm-hmm. think she that's something that she, not to speak for her, but – you know, you do get that sense of her time. Um, she feels she has to take, you know, elsewhere. And if she continues to feel that pull on her heart um, as to what she's doing with her career and with her life, um, again, we, it's very possible um, that, that she does not return. So, I, again, I just think it's very open-ended, um, and it's supposed to be, because at this point, uh, probably very few people, um, even if Maya knows if she's going to return. So – Fully agree with that statement. Something, you know, we we can talk about why is Maya doing this, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, at the end of the day, I don't think it really matters. Um, She made her decision. We respect her decision. Now it's our time to focus on the, the, the Minnesota Lynx, the current makeup of the W, and how that's going to affect it. So for me, I'm looking at the Lynx and I'm saying, what does this mean? Maya's not going to be there. So you're starting five pending a few final deals. Uh, you know, Dantas, they have two more, Atlanta has two more days to match Dantas's offer. Um, you also have some question marks and some other stuff going on, but let's look at what the projected, if you will, starting five, assuming Brunson isn't able to make it. If Brunson makes it, I think at this point they would start her. I've got my own, my own issues with that, but starting five, D Rob, Simone, Karima, Christmas, Kelly, Temi or Dantas, we do know Temi's going to be missing some time for overseas, uh, for national team commitments, and then Sill. Now, that's not a horrible starting lineup. Um, I'm going to throw Pat Ralph, our, our good friend Pat Ralph, under the bus a little bit. <laughs> while, te- while texting yesterday, his immediate reaction to the Maya news was, this is bad for the Lynx, no way they make the playoffs, a new spot just opened in my mind. Now, while I hear that, I want to throw something out there. And Rachel, I know you're going to disagree with me and argue me on this, so it's, it's good that we you got your that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, my take is honestly that this is a good thing for the Lynx. We have seen a log jam in the past with Lynx youth players having the ability to really grow into their own and blossom. We've seen a plethora of Lynx players kind of be stuck in that log jam, kick out to a different team, and be successful. We've also seen some do that and horribly fail. But a player that two players that I think will really that we're already going to get a lot of attention this year, but I think will have a lot more opportunity to grow is going to be Zandalasini and Alexis Jones. Obviously, Temi also, but like Zandalasini is somebody who, in my mind, can either be a backup to Simone or Maya. Now, with Maya gone, that means 
more minutes for her. Prima Christmas Kelly is still recovering from an injury. So is she going to be 100% to go on day one? I don't know. Xander Lucini is going to have that question mark of overseas play, but I see this as an opportunity. I mean, how many people out there, how many elite basketball minds were projecting the Lynx to be a top team this coming year if Maya did play? Now, a lot of us are saying the bar is set here when from Maya's like this past year with Maya, but I'm going to say the Lynx might have even been better because they had so much reliance on Maya because of what she's done. So I think in all honesty, this team is going to be similar to last year, if not a little bit better. You're going to be surprised. I, I think that's a really solid and well thought out take. I do. And I think anytime we're talking Ooh. about, we agreed. I think anytime we're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Cheryl Reeve and the Minnesota Lynx, you can't, you can't just like be like, oh man, like, you know, they're, they're not a contender or, you know, we, we you can kind of cross them off. I think that's um, jumping the gun tremendously. Now the Lynx are undergoing tremendous changes. Um, this is a, a changing of the guard in many ways um, when it comes to the personnel, the players. I mean, it's going to be completely different. You can't think of the Minnesota Lynx as the Lynx they've been, you know, the last six, seven, eight years, if you will. So this is, uh, it, it is, it, it, there's a lot of question marks, but at the same time, you've still got, in my mind, Sylvia Fowles. And if you have a Sylvia Fowles on your team, that dominant post presence who can score, who's been an MVP, if she can come out and have a really great year, you know, just a tremendous year from an offense, whatever, she's healthy, all those things, you're automatically, you have to be put up there with at least a playoff contender, being able to be there in the mix, um, you know, being able to say, can they compete for a championship? Obviously, I, I think is a stretch, uh, but you've got that dominant presence inside. You've got some good pieces, some veterans, Rebecca Brunson, Simone Augustus, you know, like you said, Zandal Lassini stepped up, you know, at times last year, we saw flashes of what she can do, what she can bring to the table. I still think there's going to be some pieces added to this team. There's some, there's still some free agents out there that, you know, you, you, you could maybe argue could fit in here. Well, maybe that brings some scoring out. A lot of people are talking about Raquana Williams. Is that, is that a person that Reeve decides to go after? Uh, but, but honestly, I, I think it, there's a lot of question marks. It could go a lot of ways, but um, it's a, it's a giant unknown. Uh, but I, I think, you know, we're, we're being ignorant if we think we can just cross them off because of the pieces they have um, and the champions they have on this team. Well, I would even I would up your ante and say uh, not to in any way, shape or form knock Atlanta. But if you look at like, all right, let's be real. The biggest question mark for Minnesota is going to be points. How are they going to continue to score high amount of points? Their defense is going to be great. Obvi this, this is an exciting time, I think, for Cheryl Reeve. Obviously not what you would hope for, but it's an exciting time because as we see players often have to kind of reinvent their game from season to season because certain other people are coming to the team and, you know, we need you to focus on this or focus on that. Cheryl's going to have to reevaluate and, and remake herself as a coach and how she coaches this team because this team is going to be completely different than we've seen past Lynx teams. So for me, the one thing that they're going to rely heavily on is Cheryl Reeves' defense. And if this team can be a top defensive team that's getting good rebounds and you have the tools with Dantas, with Temi, with Sill, then, and, you, and, and obviously with other players pushing to get rebounds too, you need some smalls that are going to, you know, force their weight. But if they can be a defensive team like Atlanta was, you can really ride the wave of those, right. of those slow streaks without points. Last year, in my opinion, Lynx had a great defense at times, but when they really struggled is when they couldn't get points on offense, that's when their defense eventually just started to get lackluster. Right. Yeah. The, the, the scoring is going to be such a key part. I mean, last year we saw it was really Sylvia and, and Maya Moore who were, you know, they were doing 80% of the scoring night in and night out. So how you um, kind of make up for the loss of more and, 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 and continue to not be so top heavy. You know, I don't, you can't just have two players that are scoring. And, and expect yourself to be, you know, successful or being able to get up there and, and compete night in and night out the way the links are used to competing. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm very intrigued with it. I think, I think it's an exciting time for Minnesota as much as that, that kind of sounds um, bizarre given the news, but I think, you know, sometimes it's good to see a great deal of change. Sometimes it's good to see 
um, have a breath of new life kind of come in. And, and that's, that, that can bring a level of excitement as well uh, with new players, younger players, you know, fresh faces, a new, you know, different dynamics, you know, that, that has to be switched up a lot. And I think we saw that a little bit last year with the Lynx that um, not that you want to call it stale, uh, not that you want to call it, you know, anything negative in that regard. But I do think that, you know, that this, this could very easily be looked at as an exciting time. Um, I think you could see, I mean, I'm going to, I want to ask you in terms of um, who else they decide to bring in, you know, you could, there's still some pretty, pretty good pieces out there that I think could fit well with the Lynx roster and, and help with some of that. This episode was recorded before Essence Carson signed with the Phoenix Mercury. So some information about Essence is slightly off, but bear with us on that. Scoring. So what, what I'll throw out there, um, <clears throat> the, the, there's, there's four players that stick out in my mind while I'm looking at the unrestricted free agents. We can get into restricted free agents later. But if, if you're talking about unrestricted free agents, the people who are really sticking out as someone who could add to this team, and if and if added, let's say let's say Lynx add one to two of these players and a good draft pick, um, I think we're talking very differently about this team. I'm gonna start with some I'm gonna start with the offense. Now I'll move to the defense. Raquana Williams. You talked about that briefly. Mm-hmm. Raquana Williams, someone we're all hyped on. Her her ups are mind blowing. I would love to see what her vert is. Um, but even more so, her ability to score bulk amount of points in short time periods is something that definitely has got to make Reeve overlook her last uh, her last uh, bosses, um, LA. Um, another player, and and this is going to sound kind of crazy because maybe I'm just talking about LA unrestricted free agents is Essence Carson. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a player who is a great two-way player. The Lynx have been on the the bad end, if you will, of her for a few years. And I think seeing what she can do, if they can pull her away, that would be a tremendous gain. But then if you flip it to the defensive side, I know we've been talking about points. Maybe maybe Reeve says, I'm confident that we're going to be able to get someone in the draft who's going to give us a boatload of points. I want to focus more on becoming a defensive-minded team. There's two people who stand out in my mind. Obviously, one of the greatest players, if not the greatest defensive player in WNBA history, Elena Beard, still unrestricted free agent. Mm -hmm. And the other one that sticks out, that was my Minnesota accent coming out there. (laughs) The other one that sticks out is T.R. Ruffin Pratt. TRP is a great two-way player. It seems to me like her days in D.C. are numbered just because there is a lot of talent on that Mystics roster, and they're going to have to. They already have enough issues trying to figure out how it's going to work. Right. Um, I mean, Mo Curry wouldn't be a bad one either. I could see Mo Curry going to Minnesota and coming off the bench and dropping some points. Um, I do. I would I throw her up there with Essence or Aquana? No, I think she'd be a little bit below. I don't think her defense is on the level of TRP or Elena. Um, but that that that's my thought. I mean, is anybody else sticking out to you? How about Cappy Pondexter? So uh, <laughs> the the reason you're you're laughing, let me explain for the fans, is I, I just I would be shocked to see Cappy and Reeves personalities on the same roster sure. together. I, I personally don't think that would work. I personally also am starting to get the sense more and more that Cappy might have played her last days in the W. That's um, a hot um, take. That's a hot take. Why do you think if, that? I the reason I think that, and obviously I you know, it's a fluid situation. I'm sure if Cappy gets a call from Seattle and they say, hey, Cappy, we want you here. We're running it back for, for a second championship. We want you here, blah, blah, blah. She might consider that. The reason I think that she's sitting out, we haven't heard her talking as much, seen her seen her in the gym on the different social medias. Um, I believe there were some reports, there were some rumors that she had, you know, after she left L.A. midseason last year, went to Indiana. I heard her come out and say she thought about possibly never playing again after that. She was kind of done with it. I think you're at that point with Cappy, with with all respect to her, that you might be in a situation where if you're not getting a ideal signing, you're just going to say, all right, cool, bye. Um, you've done enough in this league. You are in the history books for an extremely long time. Um, so, I, I mean... At the end of the day, I think the question that we commonly ask people like that is, what do you have left to prove? Mm-hmm. And at this point, I don't think she has anything left to prove. It would be more so, does she still have that drive to compete? 
does she still want to be that top competitor? I, and 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 you'll probably be able to speak to that better as a competitor. Well, I think I think you know not not to get off too far off on the Cappy Pondexter um, tangent. You know, she she did. You know, she came out um, last year and and was talking to me about how this is her last year, and then went on record and said, you know, that not this 2019 would be her last WNBA season. Um, but I think sometimes it's tough to project, pr- project the future. Um, timing is everything. Um, I do think it's possible that maybe she kind of stepping back and seeing the options on the table and seeing the situation and saying, Hey, um, maybe I'm just going to, maybe I'm going to call it now. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her somewhere like in, like a New York, um, something like that. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it's very possible, um, that, you know, she does play one more year. We're all kind of waiting to hear what happens with that. But I, I agree with you on the Minnesota take. I think that's, um, I would be shocked to see that just being a fit from a lot of different standpoints. Um, I, I think I like some of those other options from, you know, Williams and, and Carson, you know, that we kind of, we kind of talked about another person we need to talk about was Shavante zealous. Um, what, what could potentially happen with her? Um, so a lot, a lot of action is still going on. Uh, a lot of names kind of out there still, as we still kind of wait to see, um, kind of what, what the future holds from that, from this free agency standpoint. But I agree with you um, on the, on the links and, and Cappy take. Oh, guys, it must be like a 11, 11, 11 or something. Cause Rachel's agreeing with me. Oh. You know, so one other thing before, before we close out this episode that I did want to bring up briefly was when we were talking about Maya, something that we kind of jumped over cause we got excited about talking about more pun intended um, was how now, let's let's see how we're going to put this. Basically, if you look on the WNBA transaction page, you can see that Maya Moore was, con- was signed a contract and will not play in 2019. To me, what that says, and through talking to other people who are a little bit more knowledgeable about the ins and outs of this, um, people formerly in the league and whatnot, this was a move where they signed her to a contract. Again, uh, if you read Kent Youngblood's, Youngblood's uh, article in the Star Tribune, local Minnesota newspaper, you'll see that he claims it was a multi-year contract. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but what it says to me is Maya, now talking to the whole Cheryl Reeve claiming Maya isn't so upset, it does say to a certain extent that Maya did a team-friendly signing. She knew she wasn't going to play. She signed it so that going into next year, they still have her rights. Let's say Maya decides to sit out for 10 years. 10 years from now, they would still have her rights from my understanding. So that way, what they did was said that essentially in, in layman's terms, the way I take that is it's a situation where if in the end of the day, Maya does want to trade, the links will retain good trade value for her. Nobody's going to, I don't care how great Maya Moore is. You're not going to trade, you know, the kitchen sink to get a player who's not going to play this next year. Cause then you're kind of dooming yourself because to, you know, and so, for me, I, the move does say something of commitment, loyalty, um, and appreciation between Minnesota and Maya. But it was interesting. It was very um, quietly done. I mean, am I wrong? Very quietly yeah, done. I mean, like that was a, you can get on the WNBA transaction page and um, it, it's not like this was kind of put out there. So if I'm Minnesota and we've signed her to a contract I, and I'm trying to spin this in a positive way, why wasn't that talked about more? So that that's the part where I'm confused kind of on this now. Not that it doesn't mean that you're signed to a contract. You still can't be traded in 2020 and she, she could be playing for someone else. You know, that it really doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't change a whole lot in terms of what I had said earlier in the podcast about her potential future and, and the different avenues she could go. Um, I'm just confused, you know, if, if there truly was pen to paper, um, I, I would think if I'm Minnesota, I would, I would want to use that, you know, just as kind of a, um, you know, like you said, spinning this in a really positive way for the future. So the fact that it wasn't, and it was done so quietly, um, is a red flag to me. I, I agree. I will play devil's advocate because I think the other side needs to be, needs like some voice to it that may, maybe they didn't want to scare the fans to say, Hey guys, we signed Maya to this contract. And then like immediately after she's sitting or, Hey guys, we signed to this contract, but she's sitting. Um, maybe the the perception or whatever of doing that wasn't the greatest in their mind. But I hear where you're coming from. Like it does not like when you have Maya Moore on your team, 
it's shocking that if you just guaranteed yourself that she was not leaving your team, like you might not guarantee that she's staying on you forever, but you guaranteed she's not leaving you right now. You would think that would be enough to put something out there to really get the fans. Cause I know there was a lot of fans. I have, I had so many relatives and close friends from Minnesota calling me day in and day out since that first article came out, that first report <clears throat> saying, Aria, what's going on? Aria, what's going on? I know you got the end. Tell me, tell me, tell me. And so like, I, and I feel like even to say, to put out that message, like you were saying would have just been something positive to give the fans, a uh, ah, like we can breathe easy for 2019 thinking about Maya more. Cause you have to remember like, be, beyond what Maya has done on the court, what Maya has, what Maya has done, and what Maya does when she's been injured, when she's sat out a game, when the game's over, like Maya is the face of Minnesota basketball. Sure, I mean, like the there. the way the fan the way the fans react to her, like just some some news like that, I think would have been appreciated. I think you're right on that. Yeah, but I, I but I, I understand why they held it back um, because the the, the future is completely unknown so to put that out there would i mean i think we're we're essentially saying similar things could potentially give a false hope um so Mm -hmm. it needed to be done quietly yeah totally agree well rachel thanks for joining me this has been the WNBA insider show that's rachel galligan i'm aria schwartz each week different topics important to the w